The journey so far is, has been really exciting and interesting. Uh, we started out IRAP simply because um, we wanted to create a platform where young people could better understand uh, documentaries as a very powerful um, filmmaking form. Uh, it, its power lies in the fact that its narratives uh, have such a wide capacity. People say that, you know, uh, truth is often stranger than fiction. Briefly, I can say, like we said last year here, Mokolo starts 2010 
in Cameroon. And Mokolo is a, from a market name in Cameroon. It's one of the biggest open markets in Yaoundé. So at a, during the film festival called Ecran Noir, Black Screens in English, the filmmakers from around the continent, from Cameroon, from Nigeria, from, uh, from Kenya, from South Africa, they, they met and the issue was how do we get to know each other? How do we get to populate our work? How do we distribute better our, our productions? It's just not limited to Nigeria, it's everywhere. Um, as long as it has to do with Africa and Africa related media content. So, apart from Mokolo.pro, we have Mokolo.labs. That's the technical site. So, with this site, we have our experts. They, treat, they train students and professionals on how to use technology, the latest technologies, and things going on in the audio, audio visual industry, cinemas. So, if you want to learn or you're a student, so you can go on that site. They'll teach you, they'll tell you what's on, what's cutting edge in movies and industries. So you can either go with them or you can access the resources and learn about it yourself. Makolo.net is the umbrella. So we have the .tv, .pro, and we have .net. So um, basically that's what we're offering right now. It's not actually live yet, so it will be a few months before it's ready. So, sorry, you can't actually go on there right now. You'll have a look. Hi. Um, I'm the communication and media manager. So what we are working on right now is the information website while uh, we are working on the platform, what she was talking uh, earlier. So by the end of April, you will see, I hope, you will see um, a, first, um, a first sign of Mokolo Online. Why are banks not involved in Hollywood? What is going on? We began to ask questions, and one of the things that became clear is that they can't do due diligence. It's very difficult, and because we haven't sorted all our distribution related issues, so money doesn't come back as an auto. So we need to find a way to get involved and be able to structure and begin to discuss around that. The other thing that gave us worry was big filmmaking countries like America, like India. 80 to 90 percent of their TV commercials is done locally. In our own place right now, 80 percent of the major TV commercials you see on DSTV we are done outside Nigeria. Something is wrong with that. So we began to ask. I mean, I met with the now and he said some things I found very interesting. I would like to pick up that conversation with you later. But you see, part of what gave us concern was why is it so? The first thing we realized was that there was no, there, we don't have a post-production facility for audio and video locally. So we are trying to set up a post-production facility for audio, video, and a studio at uh, African Audio Space, so that at least we'll be able to give people access to, you know, tools to work with, and let's see if we can compete uh, effectively, rather than just telling them that you're taking the, the, the business away, but we haven't even put down structures that will help them bring the business uh, back. Finally, on my part, um, I'll take a question in the round. We, if you understand South Africa very well, you find out that they have a lot of skills and professionals, but they don't have a market as huge as ours. So it's important that Nigeria and South Africa work together. Um, it's part of what was uppermost in our heart, and that's one of the reasons we went to the, this uh, Durban uh, conversation. As it is, it's coming up very well. It's going to be very strong. And uh, it's something I'll tell those of us who are professionally inclined to brace up because good things are on the way. Thank you so much. The digital space, what's happening uh, in the digital space is redefining how our business does business. It's a big question to look at how documentary films can work in a digital space, but I think it represents so much opportunity be able to see a documentary on your phone or on VOD, I think it just opens up the audience potential. And we are surrounded by all these wonderful tools, tools for self-expression, tools that we can deploy to tell our stories because we are living in wonderful times. Things are happening almost on not only daily basis, on a daily basis, all around us. 
So we should just embrace these digital tools. And initially, it started with the production area, now we're in the distribution area, where we're moving from the old analog way of doing things to the digital way. And uh, so as documentary filmmakers, the work is made a lot easier. Because now, you know, you, you have access to so much digital tools that will allow you to get the highest quality, quality shots out there. Whether you do documentary or whether you are um, selling, you know, uh, fish, you have to understand that the, the consumer is king. And the consumer is no longer waiting for you to curate where and when he can consume your content. You have to deal with what the, the power that the consumer now has, which is the power that is in the smartphone, which is the power that is in the tablet, which is in the power of the multiplication of, of, of content sources. Um, and that power is dictating how filmmaking will be. And documentary has to react to that. Documentary has to react to that because things are moving pretty fast. And if you're not prepared to this, you will have problems adapting to this future. So this is why I think this topic, reinventing filmmaking and reinventing actually ourselves as well, is something that is important not only for the filmmakers but for everybody who is like looking at the future and who wants to be part of this future because digital film or digital life, digital space in general will become something that is we have to deal with. And if you're not prepared to this, then we'll probably have problems adapting to it.